Hello and welcome to the latest installment of TranscribeMe's Transcriber Training. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to transcribe a TME scribes file. TME is a special team within TranscribeMe. In order to become part of the scribes team, you will need to take the exam that's located on the exams tab. Once you're part of this team, you'll be added to the Yammer group for the TME scribes where you'll be able to find the information you need to successfully transcribe these files. So now I'm going to record the transcription of this scribe's audio that I created. I have already set up the snippets that I'm going to need for this style. I use the text expander Brevi, but you can use the snippets here on the hub. If you aren't sure what a snippet is or how to use them, be sure to check out the transcriber training video that explores the transcription page. First, I'm going to just go through and get down the words as best as I can. Then I'll go back through and make sure that I've applied the style guide correctly. I will slow down the playback speed slightly so that I have a better chance of keeping up. I do apologize for the quality of the audio. When the system audio is being recorded, it's a bit tinny and echoey. So please excuse that. Hi, this is Fran. Thank you for calling ABC Satellite Company. Who am I speaking with this morning? Okay, a lot of times, if, especially if you've been QAing for a while, you may have a habit of putting periods after these short introductory words and separating them into separate sentences, but this client has asked that we not do that. So we will be using commas more frequently, and you'll see that more as we go along. In these files, we have one side of a telephone conversation. We have either the agent or the client. This one is from the agent's point of view. When the agent is finished speaking and you can tell that they're waiting for the client to answer them, you'll want to press your enter key to create a new line to show that they are waiting for that. Sometimes it's difficult to know if they've just paused and are thinking or if they paused because the client has interrupted them. Those are just some judgment calls you'll have to make. All right, let's continue. Who am I speaking with this morning? Hi, John. Can you confirm your email, please? And the phone number associated with this account? Great. And how may I help you today? So you say you don't have service right now. What happens when you turn it on? And has anything changed? And has anything changed with your system recently? Okay, so we have just a standard gathering of information, some questions. The yeah, the client is responding, and we're just kind of working our way through those. Oh, you had roof work done. Okay. All right. It seems like there may have been a pause there because the client said something else. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a line there. Okay, we're gonna to need to probably reset that. Now it sounds here, if I listen just a little bit longer, set that. as if the client cut off the agent and therefore there's an interruption here but the style guide specifically says not to use dashes for, uh, for interruptions. And so therefore we're going to just leave that as an unfinished sentence. Okay, we're gonna need to probably reset that. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, we had some stutters and partial words and repetitions here, which gives us a good, a good chance to put our style guide to use. So there was an uh, a y, then yes, repeated, and sir. Okay, so that's how you would do that. There's no comma. We use a dash to show the partial word. No comma between repetitions, but there is a comma here because a noun of direct address 
takes a comma before it. Let's listen just to get just for a second to this speak to make sure that we have this transcribed correctly and then we'll move on. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, we're probably going to need to reset your satellite so I can. We're probably going to need to reset. I can. Now, if you'll notice, I had gonna here and going to here. And the reason I did that is because that's the way the speaker said it. In full verbatim, you type what the speaker says. Clean verbatim, we would need to change this one to going to. But if they say gonna, we go ahead and type gonna. If they say going to, we type going to. So I can set up. I can set up. And it sounds as though the speaker may have interrupted. We're going to go to another line. Back up just a little bit. I can set up an. <coughs> There's a cough, so we use the K tag in brackets. <coughs> I can set up an appointment for you. Okay, what day works best for you? Mm. All right, so we've got some thinking noises here. We've got an mm. mm. Uh huh. Uh huh. Wednesday. Okay. I can, let's see. Um, and there's no dashes between these false starts. Um, thinking noise. Looks like I can get a tech out there between 3 and 4 p.m. Will that work? We have numbers that we are always, I think I need to scooch up a little so you can see better. We have numbers that are always typed out and the abbreviation is capitalized. Will that work? Okay, so when... Now, we're going to go ahead and put the dash here even though this person obviously interrupted again, but it's also a partial word and because the speaker was going to be saying Wednesday. We're going to capitalize that. When? Yes, sir. This Wednesday. Mm -hmm. okay. So we have an appointment Wednesday between three and Wednesday between three and four. And how would you like to pay for that? It's going to be $50. It's going to be $50. Even money is always written out and we don't use any symbols. Yes, sir. We have to pay for the visit before they come out. On a debit card, okay. Can you give me those numbers, please? Was that 4398 on the end? Okay, so we have numbers here that are part of a credit card. Those numbers must be redacted using the CC tag, and I have set up the text abbreviation CCC, and we use that for each number given on the end. Okay, and the three digit code. The style guide also specifies no hyphens in words that are typically hyphenated, and so you'll see this is underlined because Grammarly really wants me to put that hyphen in there but I'm going to resist. 444, four, four. okay. All right, so we have three more numbers that need to be redacted and because they're part of the credit card, they're the CVV code, we're going to use the CC tag again. And a previous version of the style guide said not to use punctuation after tags, but we are now allowed to do so. 444, four, four. okay. All right, thank you, sir.
And now I don't think that the client said anything in between here, so we're going to continue this on the same line. All right, thank you, sir. We'll have the tech out there between three and four on Wednesday. You have a good day. And I'm not really sure if I'm missing a word here, but we'll catch it on the next time through. Between three and four on Wednesday. You have a good day. Bye-bye. Again, typically you would have a hyphen, but we're not going to put it there. All right, so we have finished transcribing all of this file, and now I'm going to go back and listen to it through from the beginning, making sure that I have the words transcribed correctly, that I haven't missed any words, and that I've applied the style guide correctly. I'm also going to speed it up a little bit to make this second listen through a little uh, quicker. And sometimes changing the speed can help you to tease out words that were not able to be heard previously. So here we go. Hi, this is Fran. Thank you for calling ABC Satellite Company. Who am I speaking with this morning? Hi, John. Can you confirm your email, please? And the phone number associated with this account? Great. And how may I help you today? So you say you don't have service right now. What happens when you turn it on? And has anything changed with your system recently? Oh, you had report done. Okay, we're gonna need to probably reset that. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, we're probably going to need to reset your satellite. So I can set up, I can set up an, <coughs> I can set up an appointment for you. Okay, what day works best for you? Mm, uh-huh. Wednesday, okay. I can, let's see. Um, looks like I can get a tech out there between 3 and 4 p.m. Will that work? Okay, so when, yes, sir. This Wednesday, mm -hmm. so we have an appointment Wednesday between 3 and 4, and how would you like to pay for that? It's going to be $50. Yes, sir, we have to pay for the visit. Okay, I think there's a little bit of a stutter here. Let me go back and listen again. Yes, sir. We have. Yes, sir. We have. Yeah, there's a stutter there with the yes. So we're going to go ahead and put that in. Yes, sir. We have to pay for the visit before they come out. On a debit card, okay. On a debit card, okay. Can you give me those numbers, please? Was that four three nine eight on the end? Okay, and the three-digit code. Four, four, four. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. We'll have the tech out there between three and four. Ah, I did miss a word out there. So between three and four on Wednesday. You have a good day. Bye-bye. Okay. So I've been through it and I've been pondering this sentence once again, because I think I've fallen back into old QA habits here where I've divided something into a sentence that probably shouldn't be. So I'm going to actually put the comma there and include this as one sentence, offsetting the noun of direct address with commas. Okay, I'm going to go back a little bit because as I was getting ready to submit this, I listened one more time just to make sure that I didn't miss anything um, that would have led you astray on this training video. And I heard something here that I didn't hear the other times. And you may have heard it and been rooting for me to put it in, but I did hear, and that's why it's always good to listen one more time, so let's listen and you see if you hear what I heard. Okay, what day works best for you? Did you hear the click there? There was a non-human sound, right? And we have a tag for that. Okay, so that needs to be there because there was a noise there. It may have been a mouse click or something like that, but it needs to be there to indicate that there was a sound there. I put it outside the punctuation because the speaker had finished what they were saying before it happened, okay? And the final thing that I noticed that I did not include when I started, because I had kind of skipped ahead a little when I started um, transcribing this, is that if I actually start at the very beginning, one, two, three, Hi, four, this is Frank. I have a silence between two and five seconds. And so therefore, I need a silence tag before this ever begins. Okay. 
Okay, and the final thing I have done is I've read the text without the audio and realized that I had a period instead of a question mark here. So you can see that I didn't catch everything in my first pass or even my second pass. And so I went through it again, not being recorded, checked everything carefully against the style guide, and found a couple more things that I needed to add in. It's very important to go over your work more than once and sometimes more than twice in order to make sure that you've done everything correctly, especially with a new style guide like this that's completely different than anything you may have done at Transcribe before. If you're brand new and this is the only style guide you know, you probably actually have a little bit of an advantage. So, careful, go over it more than once, maybe more than twice. When you feel like you finally have everything done the way it should be done, then you're ready to submit. So those are things that you're going to want to do, especially when you're new. But even if you've been around a while and this is a new style guide for you, you're going to want to transcribe it. You're going to want to go through again with the audio, read through your text without the audio, and then listen one more time with the audio at a higher speed. Make sure that you've gotten everything the way it needs to be before you submit. When you're finished, and you believe that you have everything the way that it should be, according to the style guide, then you can submit and go on to the next one. Okay, when you're ready to submit, you can hit the submit button if you wanna keep working because this will submit the file that you're working on and bring up another one, or you can click the three dots and click, click submit and exit. Now, we have automatic checkers that will check a lot of the style guide things, um, to help you if you have something wrong that you might have missed. So when you click submit, you're going to see something that tells you to fix your errors. And over here, you will get a box that tells you what your errors are. So you can see over here that it's telling me that I cannot have punctuation after a tag. This was true for the last style guide, but it has been changed. And that is now allowed to have punctuation after a tag. However, Tech has not updated the checker yet, and so it's still telling me not to. So it's very important not only that you stay up on the most current style guide, but that you are active in the Scribes Yammer group, because that's where changes like this are going to be announced. If you get an error and you're not sure if it's right or not, be sure to ask on the group or search messages to see if it's already been asked and answered. So since I know that this was an old style guide, not relevant any longer, I can safely skip that change and submit my file. So there you have it. That is transcribing a scribe's file from the agent point of view. If you still have questions, make sure to reference the scribe style guide. I'll link it in the description box below. And you can also find it in the scribes group on Yammer linked in the right hand panel. You can also ask your questions in the Scribes group and there are plenty of people there willing to help. Or you can search the group and see if the question has been asked previously and already answered. Thanks for watching.